It's Bill and Susan again. <laughs> What's a guy like you doing in a place like this? You know, they talk about Edith Wharton quite a bit. It talks about Teddy Roosevelt and William Howard Taft in the book. Um, of course, we hear about Scott and Zelda in the book. Um, we hear a lot about Frederick Law Olmsted and uh, Richard Morris Hunt, Thomas Wolfe. So you're not just hearing about the Vanderbilts and you're not- Hey, handsome. <laughs> What's a guy like you doing in a place like this? <laughs> Wait for you, sweetheart. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so why are you here today? Hi, Susan wanted me. Wait, who are you? Who who's the man behind the sunglasses? Hello, I'm Bill. Hey, and Bill. The, uh, the other half, the oddball half of Susan, <laughs> and she wanted me to do the brief intro for you all to the Biltmore Estate and the book The Last Castle, which is the epic story of love, loss, and American royalty in the nation's largest home. So, is this the nation's largest home? That's what the book says. It is. Okay. It is. Good. How many bathrooms are there? 43 bathrooms, of which, to my understanding, not one of them you can use. <laughs> That's right. Anyway. That's right. You were listening to the trolley driver. Good That's job. That's it. All right. The trolley driver knows all here. <laughs> and that, my fellow readers, was my charming husband, Bill. You'll see him again later in the video. I'm Susan. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take you along for a road reads trip and book review of the 2017 New York Times bestselling book, The Last Castle, all about the Biltmore Estate in Asheville, North Carolina by Denise Kiernan. You may already know the author from her book, The Girls of Atomic City. I have not read it yet, but after reading this book, I definitely want to check that one out. Karen herself has lived in Asheville, North Carolina for more than a decade, and her historic nerdiness, and I mean that in the best possible way, was certainly piqued by this gem of Asheville, our nation's largest home, the Biltmore. I have read a lot of nonfiction in my time, and I have to say, I really, really liked this book. It put me in the mind of Eric Larson's books, though not as lengthy and detailed as Larson's books. The Last Castle is not merely a study of the home and the people who built it, but it also folds in so many wonderful people and places and time periods. We go through a lot of time periods, the Gilded Age, women's suffrage, prohibition, the arts and crafts movement, Black Tuesday, World Wars One and Two, and many more. Oh, and of course, Asheville, North Carolina is a star in this book, along with George and Edith Vanderbilt, the original owners, and their daughter, Cornelia, whose children, with the earlier efforts of Edith and Cornelia's first husband, John Cecil, would eventually make this estate the tourist attraction that we know today. George was born in 1862, the grandson of the original wealthy Vanderbilt, Cornelius, he had originally planned to build a 6,500 square foot house. But by 1889, when the house plans were fixed, the house was now to be what we see today, a 175,000 square foot home. So just a tad larger than he planned. <laughs> On Christmas Eve in 1895, after six years of construction, George Vanderbilt officially opened his home, the Biltmore, to his first house guest, mostly family. And please remember, this was built as a private home by a bachelor, no less, with 250 rooms, including 35 bedrooms, 65 fireplaces, and as Bill correctly said, 43 bathrooms, the Biltmore is America's largest home. Nothing bigger existed before it and nothing bigger since. Kiernan started the book and is clearly enamored throughout it with Edith Dressner, who would eventually bring George's relatively long bachelorhood to an end when she and George married in 1898. Their daughter and only child Cornelia was born in 1900 right here at the Biltmore. And years later, Cornelia would give birth to both of her sons in the same room she herself was born, the Louis XV room. If you enjoy reading about that time, period when the 1800s were coming to a close and the dawn of the new century was just beginning, you will enjoy this book. If you enjoy hearing stories about house guests like Edith Wharton and grumpy old Henry James, you will enjoy this book. I happily give this book four stars. Kiernan really is a wonderful writer. She did her research, though unfortunately she was not allowed access to the archives at the estate itself. I Hello! <laughs> It's Bill and Susan again. <laughs> so, honey, this was your first time at the Biltmore. What did you think? Um, I, I thoroughly 
to say I thoroughly enjoyed it is an understatement. Um, Susan has, uh, over the years, uh, taken me to many a home tour. Uh, historical homes. Uh, historical homes. <laughs> um, to which all of them, perhaps combined, paled in comparison with the tour of the Biltmore home. Uh, it's 175,000 square feet of, uh, of um, ornate, detailed... The Gilded Age. ...construction. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, I, I, I think it demands attention. <laughs> uh, so the tapestry room, uh, the library, those are the two that come to mind right away. Um, the library was amazing. Yes. I said wow probably like five times. <laughs> and I wowed her wow. Uh, it was, it was, you took my wow and upped it a wow. That's it. Yeah. Raise raise you another wow. It, yeah. it was it was really, really pretty good. Uh but you 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 really shortchange yourself if you don't uh, cough up the extra bucks for the audio tour. Unfortunately. Uh, the audio It's already tour, expensive to go and then you have to pay to get the ticket to tour the house and then you have to pay more for the audio tour. Right. But but right. you really thought it would have been a totally different experience without doing the audio. Yes. I'm not sure I would do too many more homes in the future now without the audio tour. This one was really exceptional. Uh, and it probably, probably allowing a good couple hours is more than enough time to go through the home. Uh, and it's well worth it. But just realize for the uh, pretty high cost of entry, you're doing a tour that is probably 15 times uh, more more uh, detailed, more involved. More space to cover. Uh, much more physical space to cover. Yeah, wear uh, comfortable shoes. Yes, yeah, comfortable shoes. I did um, not. It was a regret. Yeah, what a, what a home. And what did it start off in the original design? It was supposed to be 6,500 square feet. A large home in itself already. Uh, and somehow it expanded... To 175 exploded <laughs> into the size it is now yeah what did you think um okay so this was my second time touring the home my third time there um if i'm being frank the first time i went I didn't really enjoy the house tour uh i did have the audio and i just kind of whipped through the house I just had no connection with any of it. it. I love historic homes. Like we have gone to, we've gone to Mount Vernon, uh, Monticello, Peacefield, uh, the Orchard House, Mark Twain's house. We Emily Dickinson's house. We have toured a lot of homes <laughs> in our nine plus years together. But this one's just so elaborate, so fancy, so much. You like? I just I don't. And I didn't know the people, so I didn't really have a connection. But that's what made me read The Last Castle because, um, okay, I had bought a season pass before I even toured the house the first time. It probably wasn't smart. I really regretted getting the season pass after I wasn't really thrilled about the house that much. Um, and um, I, I know myself pretty well by this point. And I know if I read a book about the people, I will feel much more attached and interested in the home. So that's what I wanted to do before I went with Bill. Um, and so reading The Last Castle did it. Like it got, I feel like I know George and I know Edith and I know Cornelia and her first husband. And then all the characters that we've, that's the fun thing about this this time period. They, these, you know, Edith Wharton and Henry James and, and, um, and Fitzgerald and they all weave in and out of people's lives and I have read a lot of books of that time period so they you know they talk about Edith Wharton quite a bit it talks about Teddy Roosevelt and William Howard Taft in the book um of course we hear about Scott and Zelda in the book um we hear a lot about Frederick Law Olmsted and uh Richard Morris Hunt and that made me think of when I read it's it's been quite a few years, but when I read um, The Greater Journey by David McCullough, um, Hunt's in here, John Singer Sargent is in here, and so much more. It's that same time period, that turn of the century. Um, Thomas Wolfe. Th 
Thomas Wolfe is a native of Asheville and I will be doing a road reads trip to his home, which I've already toured twice in the last couple years and I loved touring his home, but I have not read his book yet. This is like, you gotta, you gotta commit to reading this. I, it's, it's, um, it's not something you're gonna fly through Thomas Wolfe's writing. So, um, and then they, you know, they talk about Maxwell Perkins and Thomas Wolfe. It's just, I love that interconnectedness that, that um, Denise Kiernan brings out in the Glass Castle. So you're not just hearing about the Vanderbilts and you're not just hearing about the people who literally built the home and the workers and Asheville itself. She brings in the whole, <laughs> the whole world. I mean, they're in France, they're in England, um, they're in India. In, so would you say you're almost living? Yeah, it really takes you back yeah. to that time. It does, and that, and that, I, and I love that time. Um, so, uh, just reading this book before going to tour it. Um, well, it's always more fun when Bill is with me because Bill makes everything more fun. But um, having read this, really, really, uh, we took our time touring it this time. I mean, I really breezed through it the first time. <laughs> And we took our time and I could appreciate it so much more because I felt such a connection with it. And, and Susan needs to feel a connection. She wants to, if you notice her passion, uh, the more the connection, the more the passion, I guess that's true for anyone, but yeah. she really, really uh, um, craves for, <laughs> craves for the opportunity to connect on some level before touring a home. My connection with any of the home we've gone to has been through her. And, <laughs> but you are, you are really, you always have a natural curiosity when we tour uh, the I homes, do. even though I he do. might no, not know about Emily Dickinson or I Louisa May Alcott or Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, he, he, he's, you're always engaged. Mm -hmm. You're, you're cool that way. Yeah. <laughs> but um, if you do go, to the Biltmore. There's so much more than just the home. I mean, it, there's still, I believe, eight acres of the estate that is held um, by the family. And um, so take your bikes, go for a bike ride along the river. Um, there's a winery there. I haven't been to the winery yet, but I'll go while I still have my season pass. Um, or if get you go, another season pass. I, yeah, who knows? Yeah, yeah. Now that I'm so connected to it, um, in the spring, the gardens are, are beautiful. So I definitely will go this spring to see the gardens. Um, so just take your comfortable shoes, bring some snacks. Oh, and there are restaurants there and um, shops. And and there, there are, it's much like, uh, to address the security for a moment, uh, well, allow me to digress for just a second. If you've been there before, uh, Susan had gone by herself most recently about five months ago. It completely has changed. Yeah. You can no longer pull in front of the Biltmore, hop out in the extra space they had and grab pictures in front of the home. Yeah, we took our Winnebago, our camper van, and I thought, oh, this will be great. We can get a picture of the van with the house Couldn't in the background. No, they don't let you go past the house anymore. Yeah, it's not a temporary thing. It's a permanent thing mm -hmm. uh, to further enhance safety as well as security. And uh, there was something else I was gonna say there. Um, oh, but we wanted to do the winery. We had spent the day gone and we just thought better opportunity to an excuse to come back another time mm -hmm. and uh, pick up where we left off. Mm -hmm. But it was beautiful in February. Yeah, it's the dead of winter right now. So the trees are all bare, but if you go in but spring or summer, I'm sure it's beautiful in autumn too, before the leaves fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was fun. And I'm glad we got to take you guys along. That is why our, our channel is called Road Reads, if you've ever been wondering, because we have two Winnebago's, and one of the of which I drive, the um, camper van. It's a it's a 24 foot uh, Sprinter um, van, and um, so my vision is, I, and I haven't been doing many road reads trips because it's the dead of winter and I don't have running water in the van because it's uh, winterized. And I draw the line camping without running water. I am not a, uh, you know, a diehard camper. Um, but come spring and summer, get ready to go on some adventures with me. I will live up to the name of road reads because I will take journeys all over the place about different books. So 
I am really looking forward to spring getting here. But yeah, we're in the dead of winter and that's why I'm not living up to the road reads name. But we got to do it this time. We just took a day trip. Didn't need running water. <laughs> so, and we both had fun, right, honey? Great time. Yeah, thanks for helping me with this video. My pleasure. I'm sure they enjoy seeing you. You bring um, a certain dynamic that I alone don't bring. Age, experience. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> emphasis on age anyway i will convince him to do more future videos with me but it'll probably just be little old me next time you see me next week but thanks for watching we appreciate it if you haven't done so already please subscribe and like this video leave me a comment below if you've been to the biltmore or if you have read the last castle <laughs> bye guys see ya